Welcome to the Man of Recaps. This is The 100 Season 6. Remember, at the end of last season, our crew narrowly escaped yet another nuclear apocalypse. They were going to wait it out in space, this time with cryo sleep chambers, so it would go by real quick. But the Earth never recovered. There's only so many nuclear apocalypses it can handle in a row, I guess. So Monty set them on a course for a whole new planet. You thought this show was winding down, but it's just getting started. Now, this isn't a random alien planet. It's Planet Alpha, which was picked out because it should be habitable by humans. In fact, a colonization mission was sent here before the original nuclear nuclear apocalypse, so there could be human life down here. Unfortunately, they can't scan the planet because it's got a crazy temporal anomaly on it. So just like season one, our gang's gotta go down in person and explore a potentially dangerous new world. It's like, okay guys, let's try not to cause a nuclear apocalypse this time, which is Clark's motto for the season. So let's do better. They immediately don't do better though. In fact, Murphy does exactly what they did in season one and jumps right into the water, throwing caution to the wind. Luckily though, it seems totally fine and there's not even a mutant snake monster this time. That night, though, there is a swarm of killer bugs. Our crew's running towards the original colonization beacon. But, oh, this guy gets hit by a force field thing. Clark sees it's a radiation shield and thinks with her night blood, she should be able to go through unharmed. She brings the shield down long enough for her friends to get inside safely. Unfortunately, the guy who went first is very much dying. He is the hot pilot guy that had just started a romance with Raven. In fact, just that morning, they got it on. This is why you don't romance one of the main characters, because you're going to get killed off. Anyway, they find the human colony, and they've got a castle. Yeah. Yeah, they've got this awesome city on a beautiful mountaintop. It looks like a nice happy place, but it is totally deserted. Clark figures out just too late that something about the eclipse drives people crazy, makes them attack each other. There were all these handcuffs chained to the wall. They thought it was some weird sex thing, but no, now they realize it's to protect yourselves from the eclipse. Unfortunately, they immediately fall for the eclipse hallucinations and unchain each other, so they're having a big brawl in the town square. Finally, Clark uses some sleeping gas, knocks them all out, but the people who live here are out of their eclipse bunker. They're led by Russell Prime, and after some initial mistrust. Turns out he's a real friendly dude. They call this place Sanctum, and it seems like a paradise. Only one weird thing, though. The leaders all assume the names of the original families that landed here. For instance, this is Russell Lightborn the Seventh. They're called the Primes, and it's a cult-like religious worship of them. We call it Joe Juice after Josephine Prime. Hallowed be her name. Hallowed be her name. Not everyone on Sanctum, though, believes in the divinity of the Primes. The children of Gabriel live out in the woods. They ambush our group's landing ship with knockout darts, and their motto is Death to Primes. Wait a minute, so this planet has a seemingly wonderful, but clearly secretly devious civilization, and a bunch of savage forest people living outside? It's just Mount Weather and the Grounders all over again. Anyway, they gotta rescue their people, and that's a job for Octavia. Yes, remember last season, she was Blood Raina, the cannibal gladiator queen. So she busts in there and slaughters these children of Gabriel without even trying to make peace first. So Bellamy's like, yo sis, if you aren't hashtag doing better, you're hashtag banished. Now, flirting with one of the locals is new addition to the group, Jordan. Remember, he is Monty and Harper's son that they had while everyone else was in cryo sleep. They put him to sleep too when he was about 20 so that he could join the crew in season six. He immediately connects with this girl, Delilah, who is in fact set to be one of the primes. Tomorrow's her naming day. She's going to be Priya the seventh. So Jordan's about to go from first kiss to losing his virginity in record time. But what's this? Oh, she's hit with a stunning dart. The children of Gabriel are inside the compound. Clark chases the kidnapper down, but during the fight her hands are cut, and Russell sees that she is a night blood. Turns out that's how they decide who the next line of primes will be. The black blood is royal blood here. So now that Clark saved the day, they're all officially invited to stay, except for Colonel Dioza. She was the badass leader of the prisoner asteroid miners last season, but by the end they were on the same side. Apparently she was a big time terrorist back in her day, and they're like, we don't want Osama Bin Laden hanging out here. Remember, she's very pregnant though, and the primes come to her with a secret deal. If she kills Gabriel for them, they'll let her kid be raised in Sanctum. She meets up with the also banished Octavia, and they join forces to go hunt down Gabriel. Back in Sanctum, it is Delilah's naming day. She kisses Jordan goodbye and goes to the sketchy back room. She comes back out, Priya Prime, seventh of her name, and she's too cool now for Jordan. There's a big party that night where Clark dances with the hot guy while Bellamy looks longingly from the corner. Yes, we still ship Bella Clark, which I call clark -me, but Bellamy is still dating Echo, and they're very much in love. So Clark goes back to this guy's place, but oh, he hits her with a sleeping dart. Yeah, he's with the children of Gabriel. He's like, trust me, we're the good guys, but before we can explain, the guard find him and he's got off himself. So the primes bring a paralyzed Clark to the sketchy back room where Russell's like, hey wife, we can bring back our daughter. Yeah, they've got one of the computer chip implants just like the grounder's flame and it's like, sorry about this Clark. Cause when she wakes up after surgery, it's not Clark, it's Josephine Lightborn, their daughter. Yeah, it's not just a naming ceremony. The primes are literally being resurrected by body snatching people. It only works though in nightbloods, which are extremely rare and that's why they jumped on the chance when Clark was paralyzed in front of them. But they have a suspicion that more of the earth people might be nightbloods. So 
they're sending Josephine undercover as Clark to find out. Immediately though, Josephine sees him sneaking off. Jordan went to Delilah, but she didn't remember him at all. So he convinced the guys to do some digging. Long story short, they immediately figure out everything. Back when the first colonists landed here, the Lightborns were a happy family, but during the Red Sun Eclipse, Russell went crazy and killed his own daughter. Eventually he figured out he could bring her back by putting her chip in other people's bodies, and the religious worship body snatching just kind of grew from there. Jordan tries to tell people the truth, but they're so brainwashed they can't hear it. They're like, no, no, Delilah's one with the primes now. It's great. Soon Josephine realizes she needs help if she's going to successfully pretend to be Clark. She singles out John Murphy as the guy most likely to betray his friends for his own personal gain. She's like, yo, Clark's dead. I'm Josephine. Snatched her body. But how would you like to be immortal too? There's a couple of prime vacancies at the moment because Josephine had some beef with the other prime family and erased them. So in exchange for immortality, Murphy gives Josephine the Clark crash course. One big problem though is that they all speak grounder, which is a completely nonsense made up language. Oh, I'm taking a rare. Oh, I mean like, get to cook and fire slice. One day when Bellamy pulls Clark aside for a real heart to heart, she's like, you know what, forget this, the jig's up, knocks him out. At first Bellamy's plan is to kill them all, but he soon realizes that Clark is gone, killing them all won't bring her back. In fact, a big fight will just get more of his people killed. The best thing he can do is just let Clark go. But is Clark truly gone? No, she's still alive in there. Apparently she has a neural mesh in her head back from the alley days and her mind was able to back up on that. It's all fake science, don't think about it too hard. So the next day Bellamy notices Josephine inadvertently tapping Morse code on her arm, yeah, Clark's still alive. Murphy, meanwhile, goes to his girlfriend Amari and gets down on one knee. But that's not a ring, it's a mind drive. He's like, yeah, girl, how you want to be immortal with me? She's like, sure, yeah, that sounds fun. But soon Josephine comes to him like, hey, there's been a complication. Your friend Clark is still stuck in my head. I need your help to get her out. Now, making the best of the situation if Clark's already dead is a lot different than actively killing Clark. So Amari cracks and makes a plan with the gang to lure Josephine out to the edge where they, long story short, shut down the barrier. They're gonna drag her out to the woods to see if Gabriel can help get their friend Clark back. Now, Gabriel was one of the original primes. In fact, he and Josephine were lovers. But apparently after a while, he felt bad about the body snatching and started the Children of Gabriel revolution. Octavia and Dioza are chasing one down, but he leads them into some quicksand. He's like, hey, I'm not the bad guy here. He leaves them there to cool off for a bit, but then a temporal flare is coming. Yeah, it's related to the temporal anomaly here. This planet's crazy. Dioza gets to safety, but Octavia's gotta just dunk her head under and ride it out. It works, she's actually mostly fine, except for an oh, ugly witch witch hand now. This guy's gonna help him out, but Dioza sees his implant scar, realizes he is the Gabriel. He's like, yeah, I hate body snatching, told him not to resurrect me again, but they did anyway. Shoot me if you want, otherwise come with me to help heal Octavia's arm. He brings them to the temporal anomaly. Being this close to it gives you hallucinations. Dioza, for example, sees her future daughter. It's like, hey, by the way, no one who's ever gone in there has come back out, but Dioza's like, yo, I'm going to see what's up. Octavia's like, YOLO, and poof, she's in there too. But like three seconds later, Octavia runs back out. Her arm is totally totally healed, but she has no memory of what happened. So to help her unlock her memory, Gabriel gives her a hallucinogen. She's back in the bunker and comes face to face with her dark alter ego, Blood Raina. They have a big ol' fight and Octavia kills her evil self, squeezing an entire redemption arc into one hallucination. Now remember Maddie, Clark's adopted daughter, who last season took the flame and became a true commander? The flame is its own type of mind drive. It holds the memories of all previous commanders, but you've gotta watch out for the dark commander, Shade Hada. Right around then though, Maddie learns that the Primes killed Clark, so she's like Shade Hada to teach me the ways of the dark side. So Maddie starts killing primes. Next on her list is Priya, but Jordan thinks that Delilah's still in there, so oh, jumps in front of the blade. Also earlier, undercover Josephine talked to Clark's mom, Abby. Her mission this season has been to heal Marcus Kane, who was grievously injured at the end of season five. His wounds are too severe though, she can't save him, so she puts him back on ice till she can come up with a solution. While she's talking to fake Clark about it, she mentions how she synthetically made Clark a nightblood. Josephine's like, what jackpot? That way we can make as many hosts as we want. So Abby makes a deal with the primes in exchange for the night blood formula, they'll give her a mind drive and a willing host to resurrect her lover Marcus. So Marcus Kane's back to life with a brand new rockin' bod. He's like, hell yeah, this is awesome, until he finds out he basically killed this person and stole his body. Kane's not okay with that, so he wakes up his grounder pal Indra, who helps him take the ship and steal the night blood formula, which he takes with him into the airlock. They show his real face for his tearful goodbye with Abby. It's like, baby, I love you, but I'm not gonna be a body snatcher. You gotta let me go. And so he floats himself. Oh. Oh, for the second time, Abby watches the man she loves fly off into space that rough. So now the primes meet up like, hey, we lost the nightblood formula, plus the little girl killed someone and Josephine's been kidnapped. To make matters worse, their own people are starting to wake up, realize the primes are using them, and this guy, oh, stabs Russell's wife. That's the last straw. No more Mr. Nice Russell. He's gonna burn all the earth people at the stake. Murphy doesn't want to die though. He's like, wait, can't we make more nightblood serum if we use bone marrow? I don't know, would that work? It's fake science. Don't think too hard about it. So he lets them live for now.
now he just burns this one guy because, I mean, he's already set up the pyres. Long story short, Bellamy and Clark make it to Gabriel. Josephine's still in there like, hey, baby, I love you. Like, let's be together. But Gabriel's like, no, Joe, we had our time. I'm not letting you snatch any more bodies. And he takes her mind drive out. But in Clark's mind space, Josephine's still there and, oh, kills Clark. Clark, you can't die. You and Bellamy still need to get together in the end. So with the power of clark me shippers everywhere, Bellamy, boom, brings her back to life. Oh my God, it's really happening. These two are gonna kiss. But no, they just hug it out. I mean, honestly, maybe it's been too long at this point. Maybe they're better as platonic friends. What? Anyway, they make a plan to save Sanctum, which involves Clark going back undercover, pretending to be Josephine. Inside, they're draining Maddie's bone marrow. Russell's like, hey, we need more. We're bringing back all the primes tonight. Taking more from Maddie would kill her, so Abby makes herself a night blood so she can give the doses. So it's about to be a glorious day for Sanctum as all the primes get resurrected, including the two new primes, Murphy and Amori. They're pretending to be two of the original erased primes. Unfortunately, they were brother and sister. But another new prime tonight who's not pretending is Clark's mom, Abby. Yeah, now that she's a night blood, they decided to use her body for Josephine's mom, and it's a sick family reunion as Clark's gotta pretend to be happy to see the woman who snatched her real mom's body. But just then, the plan goes into action, the shield comes down, Army rushes in. Bellamy hits the crowd with the hard truth bomb, your religion's a lie, your gods are fake. So Russell's gotta pull out the adjustment protocol. It is Eclipse Gas, which drives everyone crazy. Actually, it's a modified version, which makes the true believers target the heretics. The primes are gonna wait this out up in space, but Murphy's had a change of heart. Screw you, Josephine. We're staying here to protect our friends. So finally, Clark can reveal that it's her. I'm proud of you, Murphy. He's like, yeah, I might be a selfish snake, but I'm our selfish snake. Our crew's captured, being forced to accept the divinity of the primes and drink the blood of Sanctum, which is basically brainwash juice. But Murphy and Amori walk in like, hey, what's up? Yeah, we're the primes. We've got a special use for these earth people. We're just gonna take them on out of here. But Murphy doesn't actually have his primes memories, including some important facts like he's gay and this is his boyfriend. So they suspect something's up. And when Murphy goes back in there, they seal the door's gonna burn the hair. It's a big ol' fight, basically playing keep away with the fire. Finally, this priestess lights herself on fire, but Octavia, boom, body tackles her. So everyone's okay, except Octavia's jacket. In fact, that's the first time she's taken it off since the temporal anomaly. She's got a wild new back tattoo, but more on that later. So up in space with some VIP hostages, the Primes take the ship. There's talk of abandoning Sanctum and going to one of the other potentially habitable planets. But there's another treasure on this ship, the 200 people still in cryosleep. They can super easily wipe their minds and give them night blood, they've got like a thousand years supply of hosts. So Clark can't stall them anymore. The jig's up. I'm not Josephine. They chase her to a corridor where she's got the airlock button. Just then Abby switches sides like, yeah, Clark, it's me, your real mom. I was pretending too. But it's very quickly apparent that she's lying and Clark's got a boom, vent the airlock, floating all the primes. The face of her mom holding on to her. Clark's got to push it off, float her own mom. Oh, hardcore Clark. Elsewhere, Maddie is now fully possessed by Shade Hada. They're trying to hack him off of the flame. But before they can, Russell comes and pulls the plug. He just saw Clark kill his whole family, so now he's gonna kill hers for revenge. But this little girl starts talking like a creepy grown man, and he's like, who are you again? Shade Hata somehow convinces him to wake the sleeping one crew, who don't know any better, still unquestioningly follow their commander. To try to save Maddie from Shade Hata, Clark pulls a bold move, threatens to kill herself. Come on, Maddie, I know you're still in there. And boom, it works, Maddie's back. Russell finds himself a prisoner. This time they successfully take Shade Hata off the flame, and then take the flame out of Maddie. But before they can delete him, Shade Hata uploads himself somewhere. How'd he do that? Where'd he go? That's a problem for next season. For now, our gang has saved Sanctum. Except, like, half of them are dead. I tried to do better. You did? You did do better. At least we didn't cause a nuclear apocalypse. I say we did pretty good. Jordan survived. He's okay. Except he did drink the brainwash juice, so watch out for that. Then Gabriel's like, hey, let me show you what's up with Octavia's tattoo. He brings them to the Anomaly Stone, this crazy floating thing. He's been studying it for 200 years with no success, but the markings on it are the same ones as on Octavia's back. And Octavia's tattoo has some of them highlighted, so if they press them all, something might happen. Oh, the anomaly's expanding. Maybe I spoke too soon about not causing a nuclear apocalypse. But no, this is something different, and coming into their tent is a random new girl. Octavia recognizes her. That is Hope Dioza, Dioza's grown-up daughter. What? How long were they in that anomaly? Anyway, they were friends, so she goes in for a hug. But not a hug, a stab. Oh, Octavia! And immediately the green flame, boom, disappears her. What the heck is going on here? Find out on Season 7 of The 100. Hit that subscribe button for more of the best recaps of TV and movies. And click the join button to support the channel and be a recap champion.